ready engage okay hey it's time to fucking suffer it's the pizza party podcast i'm pan pizza who are you people i'm i mean i'm not suffering but damn son yeah who are you people i'm pan i'm i'm nolan i guess so you apparently never speaks in the podcast according to the comment section (sighs) who's the other person (laughs) yeah and I'm Paleo Steno. I, I make YouTube videos Paleo sometimes. Paleo back. Oh boy, it's the Pizza yeah. Party Podcast. P- Paleo, you, you fuck dolphins, right? What? Yeah, you oh, fuck dolphins. No, you like getting... no th- th- those rumors are untrue. You like getting bored by dolphins? Is that no, right? No, that's definitely not true. Mm, I, I think it is true. Everybody, uh, if you all could comment, um, Paleo likes getting bored by dolphins in the comments no, below. That'd be please, much appreciated. No. Paleo, do you play Echo the Dolphin on Sega Genesis? Do you like getting played by Echo on Sega Genesis? <laughs> I, I do like Echo a little bit, but uh, honestly, the gameplay is kind of that weak. That game is fucking bullshit. There's no way to beat that game. I don't know how anyone would, were to beat Echo yeah, the Dolphin. The, the second one is a lot better. I mean, the first I, one. I mean, I have the freaking case on my shelf there since my childhood. And it's like this. This game is fucking impossible. How the fuck do you play this? Starts out as an innocent game about a dolphin, and it somehow results in the final battle going up against like a gigantic uh, a xenomorph. Gigantic alien. Yeah, like yeah. A, a xenomorph of all things. I'm not sure how or why, but that thing happened. Yeah. Here's my tutorial on how to play Echo the Dolphin. Remove from case. Put into trash. Oh. In- oh. <laughs> it's not that bad. Jeez. <laughs> I already played it. I just wanted to make a joke. You know Here's what? I- how- Here's how Paleo plays Echo the Dolphin. Summon Echo. Crawl inside him. Done. <laughs> oh, ew. Oh, man, Vor is such a trash tier fetish. Would uh, mm-hmm. people fuck the blowhole? Paleo does. Just ask him. <laughs> okay, okay, seriously. The dolphins do, do, that, do that to each other. A wow. video or a podcast? What exactly is going on with Paleo and dolphins? Yeah, what's, what's the story? <laughs> We're not all caught up yeah. in this canon. Yeah, Paleo, can you please explain why you like to fuck dolphins? I don't. I never said that. Yeah, you did. You you literally just said it. Um, Pam, can you please play the clip? Uh, hopefully. Last time. That, that was the clip. That was it. Oh man! But uh, the next video is hopefully, if you know, I don't get fucked by then. Uh, Giant Robo, the anime. It's it's like a 1992 anime, but it's stylized in this like classic 60s Astro Boy esque futuristic style and I, I i no i never watched this anime but it's a patreon review request so it feels very much like big o like one of the inspirations for one of my favorite animes big o and possibly evangelion but yeah that's the next video hopefully if i finish it if not because i'm going through some cray cray shit um i'll just i don't know get a let's play and edit it down to like 10 minutes and release that as a video Oh, yeah, that's right. Don't you live in the area that's currently uh, being attacked by the minor character from the Ninja Turtles? <laughs> what was the hurricane called? Irma. Irma. Oh, all right. oh are, are you are you are you are you recording uh, during the hurricane? Oh, no, I'm fine here. I'm just like going through some cray cray mental things. Oh, OK. Yeah, like, I was legitimately concerned for you. Yeah, I was like yeah, not so much. So, yeah, I don't know. I guess I guess apparently are you, are you getting sued. No, nah, I mean, apparently going, making like a video for like, how long have I been doing this? Seven years or so. And like try, every day, I, I, I never really took any days off. I just always thought like, okay, what am I going to do today? Am I going to draw or am I going to do a video? Am I going to draw or do a video? So I always had that mindset for about seven years. And finally, it's starting to catch up to me and starting to affect my mental being. Because I have, I just get hyperventilating at li- at late at night sometimes so if it, I- don't don't worry pan izzy and i got you we're gonna make a new video series on rebel taxi it'll be called uh izzy and nolan um review uh cartoons and we're gonna talk about uh symbionic titan and uh beast wars yeah oh man <laughs> i'm so fucking excited about this show now that i totally we've been planning for months and this isn't just a bit <laughs> yeah yeah um don't don't worry guys we, we got you covered we're gonna do this right. we're gonna do this you know what he's the bot the action's hot oh boy 
I'm gonna I'm gonna fuck I'm gonna fuck a uh, beast war. Although doing a uh, you know what'd be fun is someone do doing like a podcast like, no like a half in the bag sort of review thing where it's just people talking about a cartoon as a review you know what we yeah, could do yeah we, me and izzy could do that yeah, for you yeah, if you want fun. that's something <laughs> yeah. i wish i could do if you guys if, if you guys want to if you guys want to take a i mean pan if you want to take a break izzy and i got you covered <laughs> i remember a long time ago for some reason screw attack took a break like this was early screw attack they they for some reason didn't make a video for one day and they just hired these two other guys and it was called the french and german show and it was just these stereotypes of those countries uh talking about street fighter the movie <laughs> and nobody understood what it was nobody knew who these people were they just showed up and nobody understood it dang when was that that sounds that sounds like that sounds like it was intentional though just to fuck with people ancient screw yeah. attack welcome to the french and german show i am german i'm french i'm so happy to be here i'm so excited ah Yes. Yes. Uh, now, I want to tell you, today we have selected one of the finest movies overlooked by the Academy. We don't know why. The movie we are talking about, of course, is Street Fighter. The movie has action. The movie has good versus evil. Why? You know what? We show you. We show you what this movie has we got. We show you right now. Just like straight up, we, we're we taking a break. We know you guys won't like that, so. Oh, yeah, like 2006. Yeah, yeah like so six, a, seven. 11 years ago. Jesus. Hey, guys. I <laughs> 2000 sex more like oh, it man. <laughs> speaking of sex like i remember there was this one screw attack video where I, it was the top 10 no top five best and worst peripherals but the very end it showed off this video game called res a cybernetic shooter sort of game but it included a sort of attachment where it's called the trans vibrator mm -hmm. the, the, the trans the trans vibrator i know oh, this trans? I know this. Yeah. I, lo I loved that video so much because I was like, they made a vibrator for a video game. And like in this top 10 video, they just show like, I'm assuming a port star or just some stripper they hired and then her demonstrating the vibrator thing on this video. And I was like, how old was I? Like 15 or so. And I was like, what is this? I don't know. I'm confused. Guys, if you want to get your girlfriend into gaming, all you have to do is import this thing from Japan. Ladies, just pop in a copy of Res for your PS2 and pop this thing on your panda and BAM! You are enjoying some trance vibrations in your pants. This thing will never make your girl want to get off your PS2 again. We're all confused. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but now Screw Attack is owned by Rooster Teeth and uh, Stuttering Craig uh, went off to make Game Attack, some sort of Let's Play channel, just like everyone else. So wait, so Screw Attack got bought out? When was this? Uh, like, I don't know, like about six months ago, maybe. Oh, okay, so it is pretty recent. Yeah. I was going to say, it was like, I felt like Screw Attack is one of those things where I wasn't sure it still existed. I just assumed it was the internet's equivalent of a blockbuster. Oh. oh. I mean, you're not wrong. Ouch. <laughs> just go to the it's website, more, it's, pull off it's, dust. It's more like Death Battle Network, essentially. Yeah, basically. Yeah. You walk over there and you like, you know, you trip a little bit and you pick up and it's like a really old, dusty um, from 8-Bit Mickey. <laughs> wow. No, I never heard that name in forever. <laughs> oh, I, I only remember the name because Nolan forces us to watch the um, the guy with the glasses anniversary videos every oh. Like, once a week. Oh, my God. Oh, right. Yeah. I, I'm uh, so sorry. Ex excuse you. Those are great. How dare you? I remember. <laughs> yeah. I remember 8-Bit Mickey, Jose El Mexicano. uh <laughs> A, what was her name? Corey something? Corey in the house? <laughs> no, some Corey. <laughs> Crap, and there was... Uh, well, oh, yeah, Pro Jared a long way before he was he was part... He was part of that way, guy with the glasses or a screw attack? Screw attack, yeah. Pro yeah, Jared. He, was, he, did, he did hard news. Hard news. Oh, I, used to watch yeah, that every, right. I used to watch that every day because I liked Jared, and then I watched his videos and I realized, well, he's, he's not all that funny. Rude. Oh, okay, question time. Huh. Um... What is a YouTube channel that you regret watching back in the day, but you used to watch pretty frequently? Spax 3. <laughs> uh, uh, the Game Overthinker. Oh. oh. Who the fuck is that? Movie the movie Bob. Oh, who yeah. Who the fuck is that? It's Movie Bob, but doing video game stuff. And yeah, because like, he started like, with that. Movie Bob is one Did of those people that I watch, and I like every other video. I'm like, I don't know why I'm still subscribed. And <laughs> Asia comes out with a good one, but oh, God. Yeah, I, I like stopped watching his stuff a, a while ago. 
Oh, he, he. You know, you know what I love is that movie Bob wrote that Super Mario Bros. Three book where he basically say oh that it saved God, his yeah. life. <laughs> Didn't he say something like um, 9-11? No, like the release of the Wizard movie was the 9-11 of his generation. <laughs> no, I th- no, I, no, no, no. I think he said something to the degree of that that movie affected him more than 9-11. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, not, to the, not to the extent that he thought it was a disaster, but that it changed his life more than 9-11 did. Oh, yeah. but, to be fair, but, to, but to be fair, Sonic the Hedgehog has changed my life more than 9-11 because I was six at the time and I had no idea what the fuck was going on. Yeah, me neither. Oh, like, what's no, 9-11? I don't know. What time is no, 9-11? I have a fun story about 9-11. Oh, um, tell us your funny story about 9-11. <laughs> it's, not, it's not that 9-11 was funny. It's that what I did around 9-11 was funny. Okay. So um, when I was younger, uh, I was in first grade when 9-11 happened. I had no, none of us knew what was going on, and the teachers were trying to explain to us, okay, kids, listen, um, some uh, Arab terrorists crashed their plane into the Twin Towers, and the first questions were, what's Arab, what's terrorist, what's 9-11, what's towers, what's plane? Yeah, I don't know we this. Fucking, yeah, because we were all in fucking first grade. So uh, it's still um, it's still at my old school. I used to go to Freeze Lake School back in uh, – Hartford, Wisconsin, I think it was. And uh, if you go there now, it should still be there. It's just this giant American flag quilt. And it was there was a it was made out of patches from the entire student body Mm -hmm. um, at the time. Now, uh, when we were younger, uh, we uh, went I mean, in the first grade, um, the teacher explained to us, "Okay, guys, don't draw on this outside part of the of your patch or otherwise it won't show up. Oh, I did talk about this already. Okay. Yes, right. yes, well, you did talk about this. But that, why didn't you fucking stop me? I don't know. I was just like, whatever. But anyway, I, I remember like we also did something similar where we all had to draw in fifth grade. We all had to draw like something nine eleven related or something. And I guess this isn't very tasteful looking back on it. But at the time, I assume like yeah, that's what I should draw. It was basically like a a pile of rubble and like an airplane sticking out of the rubble. And then there's like a a single flag there and one random person just saluting the flag, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) You guys had assignments after it happened? Sometime around there. About it? I guess. It was like a year. Like my school didn't do that at all. I don't know. Like what year did Tuck Everlasting come out? That's, hang on. That's how I gauge things. Like, what year did that movie come out? Let's see, Tuck Ever... You, re- you reference your entire life by Tuck Everlasting? <laughs> no, but depending on what movie came out, like, if you say 1989, I think, oh, that's when The Simpsons premiered. That's so stupid. <laughs> it's like, it's it's the association, like, 1995. Oh, that's when PlayStation came out. I, I much rather for it to be, like, uh, anything that happened before Tuck Everlasting is be a, a BT... <laughs> <laughs> PTE. <laughs> look, I, look, I was in fifth grade and we had to read the book Tuck Everlasting and coincidentally the movie came out the Disney movie that nobody ever talks about ever um, all I remember from that movie is this dude getting shot point blank in the chest and he just walks it off yeah he's fucking Iron Man with that shit I am Iron Man I gotta go take a dump in my big white van <laughs> <laughs> tuck everlasting tuck his foreskin into never mind oh, uh, hey, hey now okay uh, uh going uh tuck speaking, his foreskin. <laughs> speaking of you doing stuff like that i like to assume that your favorite anime is based off whether or not you can make a big giant orgasm joke out of it oh that's, so that's why it's the it. big o that's it <laughs> that's where it was going yeah. that's it we did it everybody although i was trying to find footage of big o illegally and i went on like certain websites and i typed it in the big o and i just kept finding a bunch of random searches for like hot chick getting o faced in the mouth or something (laughs) stuff like that it was like you cannot find the big o you cannot find it although conveniently it's on youtube in high quality from a lot of times if what i've heard is that a a lot of guys can't find the girls big o oh Oh, what, 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 okay, um, now, I don't remember sex ed, so Izzy, can you please explain to me what the big O is? Gasm? Stop trying me smiling. What? <laughs> I remember watching The Proud Family and Oscar called himself the are big you, wait, O. Wait, 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 I just realized, Nolan, you're drawing Vore, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I liked it better with the frown. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> there we go. Oh, I did no. it. Periel <laughs> is in his dolphin. I, I, I'll link to the uh, image that's done. No, no, make that the make that the thumbnail. Uh, no. no explanation. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Do it, you fucking pussy oh. bitch. What happens when you put a group of 15 people together and ask them to create a mascot to compete with the face of video games? Sonic the Hedgehog. Hey, I'm Stuttering Craig. And I'm Handsome Tom. For Screw Attack's best and worst Sonic games. Number five. But uh, any other memories of classic Screw Attack? Oh, I remember the fucking Sonic countdowns used to piss me off because with Mario, they did the top 10 best and worst. But with Sonic, they only did top five. And their reasoning was because Sonic didn't have enough good games. I was like, you fucking bitches. Oh, <laughs> no, yeah. no, but the worst part is that they didn't even bother trying because they had a lot of uh, a lot of the clips they used were from fucking fan games like uh they did this fan game called Sonic GL in one of them, and it wasn't even a real Sonic game. They didn't even give a shit. Oh, yeah, that's how the world feels. Look, it was 2008. Like, Sonic wasn't having a good year, you know? Speaking of Sonic, what do you guys think about um, Eggat or Omelette? Um, oh, the Omelette? The little um, Eggman's niece or yeah, daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's uh, cute. Her name is Omelet. No, <laughs> I've, I've, well, so far no one's like settled on a name. Like everyone keeps throwing out their own, like Agneta, Agatha, Omelet. Like, like just a bunch of egg puns. <laughs> I like <laughs> Omelet. Omelet. <laughs> that, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So apparently, cool. because there's a boss character in I think Sonic Mania that's upside down, and it kind of looks like Robotnik has hair on top, and everyone thinks that looks like a girl. So everyone, yeah. everyone created Omelet from her from that. What I'm no one misread a sprite? Some yes, yeah, someone created her. It wasn't exactly a. Uh, no one knows. It wasn't. It wasn't everybody. It was just one person. But I forget what his name is. No one knows. So, so if anybody knows who that is, please let me know. Yeah. Oh. But like, I've never seen a fan character go like so like. You, like everyone loves her like everyone that runs across i haven't seen too much hate or people be like yeah. oh no well i mean but like like at some point where like if they do make a sonic mania 2 I, I don't think legally they can make her a character because the the whole they could technically be sued at any point for someone stealing uh, a design <sighs> but like i almost want them to hire that person and add that to canon because she's so cool well yeah. i mean I, I think i think law technically um i don't know if this is entirely true but law stipulates if it's a fan character the company technically could use them if they wanted to since it is based on their ip uh, uh, i don't know i'm not uh, sure like, like for a while there um because i was a big fan of community they were doing amas and people were like giving them suggestions for episodes and like one of the writers is like stop doing that we legally cannot do that episode now like you are pigeonholing us um Aww. like you're, 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 you're so i don't know I, I, it's different for tv versus video games yeah. but um I, I would love for her to be a character in Mania only because Mania is literally like an app, like it's a game infested by fans, you know, like the fandom of Sonic. Mm -hmm. So like a fan character making it into the game is almost like perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, the reason why people like her, it's, it's you know, it's, if like she was like a shitty anime loli, people may just bone her like the anime Wendy's. Uh, it, that would be like terrible and just you know embarrassing but like now that's just all, anime wendy is amazing and i still love her to this day <laughs> i know I love, I love anime wendy people getting mad about her is fucking stupid i know but it's just like i don't know for some reason if you draw it as a cartoon it's more acceptable but if you draw it as an anime it just seems like these guys just want to fuck this girl don't they <laughs> well i mean who wouldn't want to fuck anime Wendy, honestly, I'm gay, and even I'd fuck her. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I, well, I'd fuck her if she brought back like the the um, Wendy's is uh buffalo wings. Those were good. They had those like 2011. Eat my I, I could use <sighs> some buffalo wings. Chili, you can get rid of the fucking chili. Her, 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 never mind. I was gonna say I'm gonna, draw, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna draw anime Wendy now. Anime, Do it. Anime Wendy's pussy Mom. smells like chili. No, oh, but send it with a chicken nugget. Yeah, I'll shove her nuggets down her face. I don't know if you guys have uh, Culver's or anything where you guys are, but fucking uh, Culver's brought back their buffalo chicken tenders. Oh. What the fuck They're is a... The fuck you is don't a know what a chicken... No, what's it's a Culver's? A based uh, dairy burger joint where, uh. like, it, it's well-known for, like, cheeseburgers and uh, also ice creams. Mm. 
Uh, kind of like a burger custard fi. specifically. So like a burger fi, yeah. Yeah, but good. No, oh. I have one like five minutes away from my house, but I never go to it. What the fuck? Yeah, what the fuck? Don't don't take advantage. Don't um don't don't forget it, Izzy. It's so good. It's so it's intolerant, man. What the fuck? You know this. Do I? Yeah. Lactose intolerance. I I have like a yeah. hundred gajillion friends. They all have Jeez. very specific like factoids and information about them. And the second I forget it, they go like, oh, "I told you this before." And I'm like, "Dude, seriously, I, I don't." I complain about it on Twitter a lot because like that's how I know there's no God. No one would make me <laughs> good. I don't go on Twitter. I don't browse Twitter because their algorithm-based timeline is bullshit. Oh yeah, yeah that's. It is weird. Like, I'll post one thing. Like, uh, I, I live tweeted me trying to buy a Switch Friday because, like, I got up at, like, 5 a.m. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, I know Switches are hard to find, and they made a they made a Switch that was, like, green and pink, and it just matches my branding perfectly. Ooh. So, like, that's the one I'm going to get. And um, so I'm like, all right, my Walmart's not 24 hours. So I'm going to go as soon as it opens. I'm going to wake up at 5, get there at 6, and then just walk in and try to be the first customer because I know each one of these Walmarts probably can get one to four and I go through the, the whole ordeal and like the people, they didn't even get one. My Walmart that doesn't, is not even 24 hours, doesn't get one. And I'm like, can you call the local one? The one in the rich part of town got eight. So apparently uh, my, mine's the poor Walmart where they don't think poor people deserve switches. It's time oh. to go to the rich Walmart. <laughs> well, because all of them, like, okay. eight, eight of them. Okay, Izzy, let me just put this into perspective. Poor Walmart, people who can't afford switches. It makes sense. See Walmart. Yeah, I, I know. I know, but it's not yours. So deal with it. Go to the fancy part of town. Walk in where everybody's drinking champagne out of like a fountain. And they're like, oh, oh, have you been to the poor wall? It's so awful. Oh. Well, and, then, and, then, and then one of them spills champagne. This dress was $20,000. Are you out of your mind? And then she like pulls off her like, like silk glove and slaps him in the face or pouring champagne on her dress. Well, yes, what can I do for you? Uh, yes, you're looking for the switch. Yes, we have eight of them. <laughs> we have eight of them, and one of them is made out of platinum and diamonds, you fucking retards. <laughs> now you have to suck our dicks for them. <laughs> I can say nigger because I can Whoa. pay it off. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Hey, that's social, com- that's social commentary. Why did you... <laughs> Do you say the do you say the word like once a podcast? You said no, this is like said the third that. time Nolan said it. Yeah, no. I, I know, but I feel I feel like recently, like like, 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 like overall, like, but not like in a row. No, if you I don't know what happens if you say it three times in a row. What do you summon? <laughs> okay, let's let's give, it a, <laughs> let's give it a try. No, <laughs> no! <laughs> it's the social justice police. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 God. Okay, okay, so I went over to a friend's place, and um, the, the door was open, and so I went through, and they were in their room playing a game, and they were naked. I, I found that out afterwards, what? but, like, I knock on the door, and I go, NYPD, and I live in Indiana, and the guy, like, what, what? And it's, like, freaking the fuck out. I'm, like, why would the New York Police Department be here? Oh, shit. That's how fucking <laughs> dedicated they were. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Well, they were scrambling to get their clothes on, so that's why they were the freaked out because they thought legitimately police were there. Oh and then, no! And they're like bypass the door, so like I'm right in their room, you know, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, but but to finish up the switch story, so basically, I was live tweeting the fact that like you know my Walmart didn't have any. I have to go to the rich one, da da. And like it's weird because like I'm live tweeting it, so I assume everyone's just like hitting the 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 most recent one. But I had people like message me like links to like online stores that have switches because they didn't want me to like not get it. Mm-hmm. And, I, and it's like the one I wanted was a Walmart exclusive Splatoon bundle. And the best part was the the cashier guy's like, "Oh, you gonna get any other games with it?" I'm like, "No, I'm just gonna I can afford the just the bundle for now." And he goes, "Oh, Splatoon." And I look at his arm and he has a, a Zelda tattoo. So like, I, yeah, yeah, he was like very upset that I wasn't like getting Breath of the Wild. But I'm Aww. gonna wait. I'm gonna wait on that one. I was thinking of like going to buy like um what's it called the Xbox One solely for Cuphead since I don't know I was like hey yeah it's on PC though yeah, I don't, why not I just up, why not just upgrade your computer like you've been saying you wanted I to got a Mac time. and I'm too attached to this thing and like oh doesn't the, didn't the PC get rid of like the desktop and stuff and now it's like that weird interface no it's, it's still, still like, the desktop like interface. I mean, it's still, 
it's still like functional. Yeah, it's not. It's like sort. It's sort of like a weird hybrid, but it's still functional. Yeah, because I'm very comfortable editing with and doing everything on the Mac. So it's like having a PC solely for gaming. I guess eventually someday. I don't know. I see. I don't really like to play games on the computer. Like I know it's like the master race or whatever, yeah. but like. No, I used to. I used to too. But what if you just get a game pad and like a real computer? It's it's so much fun. Yeah, sure. But I don't know. Like for me, my computer is a workstation, so I like to keep it that way. And mm-hmm. I like my video games to be like the Switch is perfect <sighs> because like I could turn it off anytime and it just goes into sleep mode, kind of like the DS where you can close it. So like I can work a little bit, play a game, pause it, and then I don't have to worry about it booting back up and having to do all the loading and shit. Um, mm-hmm. But I really want Cuphead too. Cuphead. The fact that it's an Xbox and a PC exclusive really kills me. Wasn't yeah. it not? Wasn't that not the case originally? It was always no, like I, that. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know. Yeah. I, I thought maybe it was going to be multi console or something, and then Microsoft bought it because they realized we don't have any. It might be eventually. I just have no idea if, yeah. it, if it will. Was, I just want that and Sunset Overdrive and also Rare Replay. Oh wow, yeah. rare, rare replay, uh huh. Just b- buy a bunch of old I, I <laughs> games I already own, but in HD. HD, and if you yeah. die, you can just hit rewind. Yeah, I did. I did recently uh, play Banjo Kazooie. Um, is that uh that um Xbox Live Arcade port, which which is in widescreen, so it's like, oh, this is excellent. Yeah, I can actually play Banjo Kazooie in widescreen. Yeah. And the 360's got one of the best controllers. So yeah. like, oh, there he does it. Sixty controller. Thank you very much. I would honestly say that the um, the 360 port is probably the definitive version for hmm. Banjo Kazooie. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I was using the Xbox One uh, controller for that since it, it. I have like all of my purchases from a uh, uh, Xbox Live Arcade transferred over. Oh, yeah. It's weird that like Microsoft is now the one that like allows you to play all of the previous generations on it on its console, and yet like with Nintendo and Sony, it's like eh. okay, <laughs> when you just buy far- these individual systems behind in the console race you gotta do what you gotta do yeah to, to get people back in because i the xbox one is like really hurting yeah i think x i think xbox has been hurting since the 360 days because according to a, a couple friends of mine and some articles uh the xbox like was barely the xbox 360 was barely perf- <laughs> barely profitable yeah. Hmm. yeah it was selling well it was selling well but the problem was wasn't like bringing in the money because of all the stuff it did like the online and the uh all that other all that other bullshit yeah well, I mean, I could, I could be. xbox got to bring back all the old original xbox exclusives and bring them to the new xbox one like bring back drake of the 99 dragons that's a quality game <laughs> It's just like Xbox did, did have some pretty good IPs. Like they bought Rareware, and if they yeah. put the time and effort to like actually make good games for it. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, oh, oh did you guys hear that? Apparently, um, part of the reason why this, I mean, this is such an internet rumor, so I don't know if it's true or not. But apparently, um, Microsoft thought they were going to buy Donkey Kong by buying um, Rare. <laughs> that does sound like an internet rumor. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, okay, it, but but to be fair, Microsoft has made many stupid mistakes like that. So is it really that far fetched? No. Nah. I mean, keep in mind that Rare made every Donkey Kong game since the Super Nintendo. So like, I can yeah. kind of see where they would think that. Yeah. Although, uh, what's crazy is that they, they were still able to release a Diddy Kong Racing on the DS, but they had to get rid of B- Banjo and Conquer. They weren't allowed to bring those yeah. characters back. Well, well, yeah, because yeah. Nintendo owns the games and characters, except for, you know, Banjo and Conker. Uh, so yeah. they can re-release yeah. those games as much as they want. Yeah, and, and yeah. those are portable games. They're not console games because Microsoft does not have a portable console unless you count a laptop. <laughs> Otherwise, no. Yeah, it's really interesting uh, because I think Rare was really dead set on being purchased by Nintendo, I think, but Miyamoto yeah. just treated them like garbage. Yeah. He, liter- he literally just, like, constantly shat on them in Donkey Kong, like, saying fans will put up with any mediocre gameplay so long as the game looks good, because he was super salty that uh, um, Donkey Kong was doing better than uh, his that games were. Really a mistranslated interview, though. Hmm. I mean, I got, I got this info from uh, Guru Larry Stackton. He's usually pretty good about, like, all that stuff. Hey, I love his channel. He's great. Oh, I, okay. No, from what I've heard, uh, the reason why Miyamoto was so mad was because, like, uh, after Donkey Kong Country released, uh, 
everyone was pressuring him to have Yoshi Island look 3D and stuff when, I mean, or, or Yoshi Store, no, wait, yeah, Yoshi Island. Yeah, Super Mario World to Yoshi's Island. When he wanted yeah. to be stylized and cartoony, when everyone wanted to be realistic, and that's why he was mad, I think. I, yeah, I think, I think he straight up, like, made it look like a, uh, he made it look like a kid's crayon drawing just to spite everyone. Yeah. yeah. Dicks. <laughs> However, still ended up being one of the great greatest platformers, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, we should have Guru Larry on sometime. Hello, if you. He, oh, he'd be a great guest. Yeah, isn't yeah, that he... guy that's always in every comment section? <laughs> yes, always. <laughs> so, just, yeah, he's... guys, guys, quick! Everybody, hold hands. Let's do Larry summoning ritual. Oh no! You say for You say to get Mercury to here. here. <laughs> We have to mention uh, Peter and Molyneux, like... Okay. Peter okay. Molyneux. Peter Molyneux is a hack fraud. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Molyneux, stop making games, you loser. Oh, Dark Side <laughs> Phil is a fucking fraud. Oh, uh... Hey, speaking... Let me ask y'all people something. You ever fuck Peter Molyneux to death? Talk about going out with a bang, people. <laughs> 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 Sometimes it can be shitty When there's a game you really want You wait a really long time It takes bloody years to come But what about those games That you just don't get to play They were not released in the US But places like the UK So I, I want to I wanna talk a little bit about Mike Mozart real quick Uh oh Oh no no, 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 not not in like a negative thing, but because oh uh, before when he talked so much about like doing all this stuff and then like saying that he's not allowed to talk about him actually being on it and things like that, I thought that was a little bit of a load of crap because most NDAs usually is like um, from when you work on it to when it's released. After it's released, you're allowed to talk about it. I am currently working with a company that I can't specify and I have to sign an NDA that literally states that I can never talk about working for the company ever, um, ever, like even after it's done, um, partially due to um, some of the people I'm working with are international and there's some laws about that. So it's not like them just being a total dick. But now that I've, I've been hit with that, where it's like, I can't put on my demo reel. I can, I could talk about it professionally. Like, like, in a like if I'm talking to a, a, a like I'm being interviewed and I want to show off some work, I can show it then, but I can't put it on like YouTube, mm -hmm. the work I've done. Mm -hmm. um, but now that I've, I've seen that actually happen, um, there might be some credit to like, <laughs> work work granted. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and for the record, guys, Izzy is talking about working on the new Bubsy game. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so you know, let, can keep, edit it out. Edit it out. Keep that on the download that um, Izzy is working on Bubsy, uh, the Furry Strike Back. Oh, yeah. Um, coming out on Steam and PS4. We can't talk about it. We can't let anybody know that Izzy is working on this project. Um, she, she is the she is the lead designing um, is um, Bubsy's. Uh, Bubsy gets bussy. But, but but now that I've like I've I've been hit by that, I'm kind of like okay, there there could be some truth. Granted, half those stories he said, told seems so far fetched, anyways. Yeah, so, I want to believe. Like, yeah. All right. Yeah, it's, it's the it's the um X Files theme, but we edit Mike Mozart faces <laughs> over it. <laughs> Holy I mean, I, shit! I just can't trust the what? guy that has his name on a hat. Okay, yeah. so I'm watching the Powerpuff Girls on TV. It's a new episode, and like, there's a pink gorilla, and the pink gorilla screams at a uh, some other character, and it screams so hard that her skin rips off revealing a skull and the skin grows back what i'm watching the power of girls on tv right now the reboot yeah the episode. reboot what episode is this it's a new episode uh hang on uh fuck speaking of the power of Bride... girls reboot let's get into the news bridezilla is the episode bridezilla okay the news right. this is a great animation this... podcast this yeah. this news um comes from the power of girls reboot we're getting a fourth Powerpuff Girl, even though we've already had two extra Powerpuff Girls already. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Two? Wait, wait. Who's the two? Yeah, I know Bunny. Who's the other one? Bunny and the Squirrel. Oh, right. Yeah, the, yeah, squirrel. the Squirrel. Oh, the Squirrel! 
I love I'm, the squirrel. I'm, How do I I'm, I'm, I'm sort of acquaintances slash friends with Bug Eyed Freaks, and they posted about that on their Tumblr. Shout out to Bug Eyed Freaks. And also, let's give a quick shout out to Christina Applegate. Who? Who? I mean, I've been making Eric Andre references all the time. So, oh, okay. You just got to do it. So yeah, there's gonna be a new Powerpuff Girls, and she's black and voiced by Toya De 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 Lazy. She also has blonde hair and big hips. I thought which is very I tasteful. Blonde blonde hair. I thought her hair it's was blue. green. Yeah, her hair was, was it? green. It's I remember it being. I remember it being. Uh, I remember it being blonde, but I could be remember yeah, wrong. But she does have like the big the hips. I okay, honestly, Not like reliable narrator. <laughs> I sh I'm pretty sure it's just going to be like, I, they said it was for like a special, like a four part special or something. So she's going to show for f yeah. four episodes yeah. and disappear. No, it's a five part. No, it, five. it's confusing. It's a, it, it's a five part special titled The Power of Four. Yeah. Oh, oh kind of oh, like, kind of like Pokemon oh, wow. 2000, The Power of One. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> You've got the touch. Dude. That's Transformers. I was looking at the Cartoon Network uh, schedule archive, and it, yeah, it says uh, uh, Powerpuff Girls Power of Four, but I thought it said Power of Fear. <laughs> <laughs> That's if Bubbles goes hardcore again. Uh, she goes hardcore a lot, a lot in the new yeah, show. Yeah, and then they yeah. ruined it. That's a character trick. Monkey fucks. Um, I'm looking at the, the movie, the, the cartoon right now. There's some, I don't know, this show, the reboot's yeah. weird when you watch with the sound off. Yeah, there's an image of the fourth Powerpuff Girl. They could have used brown hair. It would match with her skin too much. They would have to... They can make a dark brown color hair. Yeah, why Why do the girls have different colors? Well, I mean, to make them distinctively different. Yeah, the rest of their designs no are basically man. the same. Yeah. Guys, I have a new cartoon theory! <gasps> oh, this is gonna be great. Oh, man. The, per the professor made the Powerpuff Girls, but not the way you think he did. He checked <gasps> Chemical X is his own semen. Chemical X is his own seed, but be, what, but but how did the girls have different? You might ask. Hmm. Well, Buttercup is Professor's biological daughter, but he stole hair from two hey. girls he kidnapped. You know Whoa. what? Hey. hey, you know what would be really cool if if you have like a container of Coca Cola and then you have a, but it's in the shape of the Chemical X uh, thingy. You know, that'd be cool. I would want that. That's that's like ecto cooler for like Powerpuff yeah, Girls. Yeah, like that'd they should cool. release that. Oh my god! Yeah, that'd be great. Give me some Chemical X. Oh yeah. Yeah, Car Cartoon Network. If you're gonna be uh, if you're gonna be uh, monetizing the Powerpuff Girls anyway, just just do it. Make like just an energy it. drink of Chemical yeah. X. So yeah. so like with this new girl, um, judging by the fact that she's distinctly different and looks very like her design doesn't Black. look good. Like no, and, and why is she taller than the rest of them? It's yeah, yeah, a fam. Yeah, it's, it's not. It, none of this matters. This don't matter. Yeah. Oh, I'm seeing. I, 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 holy I, I, holy I, shit! I'm on I, TV. I, on the TV. They're showing the fucking promo. Hang on. Let me see. Oh my god. Shit. I, I, also, I, I do want to. I do want to clarify that I don't have a problem with the black Powerpuff Girl. But do you really have to give her like hips? Like really? That's, I guess she's so... supposed to be older. Oh, they, they don't actually show her on screen. Don't you Fuck know this. Nolan? Huh? Don't you know Nolan? Thick is in. I get that, but that, that just seems like a very unfortunate but it's stereotype. In. Okay, okay. It's not a stereotype. So, so like, my, my point is, I guarantee she's going to end up being a villain by the end of the episode. Nah, it's going to be like... So it was the power of fear. I'm sure well, it's going to be like a more books thing where it's like, I want to be a Powerpuff Girls too. What's up, everyone? Um, but the Powerpuff Girls seem actually like this one, so yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, they like her. She's obviously you got like while she's dramatically different, she still doesn't have fingers, and you know, what's her name has fingers. So, um, uh, Princess has fingers, so that's why she can't be part of the club. Oh, uh, but like my my point is like I feel like this is gonna be a bismuth. Bismuth. Yeah, she yeah. disappears. You know, they advertise it as, hey, we have a new fourth main character. They're here to stay. No, but they're we're going to do this special, and they're going to not appear after the special. Yeah, basically. I mean, look, it, none of this matters. It, it, look, we we all know this is bullshit. It's the status quo. They're not going to affect that, so it's all a bunch of lies. But yeah. I, you know what I like to see is, like, remember when the Powerpuff Girls reboot was coming out, and they had that uh, create your own Powerpuff Girl, like... I'm sure, like, oh, there's yeah, a billion they're... of them are going to yeah. show up at the end or something. You know? So we're going to get a repeat of uh, that episode from, like, like season three or four of the Powerpuff Girls, where yeah, they we... had the, the guy, like, creating all the different, like, manufacturing the Powerpuff Girls. Maybe. That episode was dark. 
Yeah. I, really loved, I like that episode. The girls almost died and then Come Professor on. Burnley escaped dick. their life. Dick is good, right? Theory. Give us the dick, Fan dick. Yeah. <laughs> Give us your dick, bro. It's, it's actually Morbox creates this fourth Powerpuff girl and she's using the Avatar technology like they did with the Navi. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, alternatively, they bring back Dick Hardy and they don't explain his backstory at all and we're just supposed to assume we he is yeah basically yeah. that that sounds plausible it's it's really hard for me to care about the reboot anymore <laughs> because they they hardly ever air it so like i'm it's it's really hard for me to get mad at anything yeah, they do they they seem legit ashamed of it now and i'm not surprised we're all ashamed yeah. like they don't they rarely air it anymore so it's at comic-con there was nothing about it although i did uh, there was at least like comic book signing for the comic books of the powerpuff girls i met uh jake goldman he was oh, cool. cool. Aren't they like nice. only airing T Titans Go anyways? Yeah. Yeah. None of this matters. Power of it's all Teen Titans from now on for the rest of eternity. Well, Buckle I think, in. I mean, force people into watching the uh, the Cartoon Network app. Mm -hmm. Which, to be fair, that's a dumb. S no, it. it Wait, Teen Titans isn't that like the better way of watching stuff anyways? You get to choose what episode you want, when you want to start, and you only have to watch like six commercials total. That's the future. But, but why would you when like almost all of Cartoon Network stuff is on Hulu? Hulu or the app, whatever. I don't know. But Hulu has more ads. Hulu's like six ads per commercial break or some shit. Uh, well, now if you get the non-ad version. Oh, yeah. well, like, you, you, you can pay to have slightly less ads and then you can pay a lot more to get the no ads. I, <sighs> I'm not a big fan of Hulu, even though it, right now it seems like it has the, the better content compared to yeah, Netflix. It, it definitely has better like TV show stuff than Netflix because mm -hmm. uh, Hulu keeps their stuff around a lot longer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think the fourth Powerpuff Girls will die? Powerpuff Girl will die? That'd be I funny. Guess. I'd like that. That'd be fucked up. Yeah. Fucked I mean, up. Bunny died. True. Yeah, Bunny's fucking dead. They never talked about her again. Ooh, a, a Chinks episode well, of Teen Titans Go. I guarantee most people are like me. And as soon as someone said, did you hear they're adding a fourth power buff girl? And I'm like, they're bringing back Bunny? Like, I'm sure, like, everyone jumped to that conclusion. No, you guys? Was it just no. I, I was like, I don't give a shit. I'm like, I'm done with this bullshit. I don't care. I'm not going to be one of those people making like 40 rant videos on Powerpuff Girls. I don't want this. That's but why I don't... you made it part of the news. Yeah, look, we got to talk about something for the news. Like, there's an animation don't have that much news going on. Adventure got... Time won an Emmy. Oh, oh great. What? Wow. What well, I don't do? get that Emmy, so what do I care? <laughs> yeah, fuck that shit. Adventure Time is dead anyway, so who cares? It's all fucked. Everything's fucked. It's all a waste. I became a fan again. Pan, are, Pan, are you becoming full, full on hardcore nihilistic? Like I don't atheist, know. like it's just like 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 nuclear holocaust, like just completely destroyed. Cartoons like, are fucked. I don't know. We're all fucked. Okay, what's wrong, Pan? Talk to us and your thousands of viewers. Let's oh, okay. So I don't know. It's like everyone's so negative about cartoons now. Everyone's angry. Like n nobody likes anything anymore. It's, if, if you like Steven Universe or Rick and Morty, you're an asshole. Apparently, everything's everyone's an asshole. Well, I mean, being negative is that helping? Is that adding? Yeah, yeah. Is it? Is We're it? Maybe fucked. you should be the paragon of justice. Maybe you should be the paragon of a. Uh, Positivity. Yeah. Be so, the hero we don't ask for, but the hero we deserve. Yeah, it's like I don't know what. I'm, okay, guys. What am I okay, doing? Okay, guys. Okay, guys. Okay, guys. Okay, guys. So we're gonna. We're, okay, we're all gonna say something positive about currently airing cartoons right now. Oh boy. Okay. Um. Is you start? Oh shit! Oh, I was thinking of stuff. Um. <laughs> that um uh there's a show that i'm working on something for that i can't talk about yay. that's that's a positive for me um uh -huh. okay mm -hmm. no um shit uh sh i oh man there's positive things uh th all the cartoons are really pretty the colors are pretty no um yeah. skip i want to fuck jinx yeah okay oh, okay <laughs> I want to grab her by her pigtail hair and just like go fucking nuts. 
Oh my god. I mean, Cyborg didn't. He turned out okay. Yeah. That's true. That's true. It's canon. Apparently, I'm watching Teen Titans go on TV right now, and it's an episode where Cyborg and Jinx are apparently in a relationship, and they had a baby, except the baby is just Gizmo. And they're right now, they're just changing him, changing his diaper on TV. Oh, what? I don't know why. Was that an episode written by uh, the, the guy from Regular Show? <laughs> no, I don't think Chichi Quinto had anything to do with this. He's busy okay. working on, um, what's it called? Uh, close Enough. Yeah, Close Enough, which I, when I went to Cartoon Network Studios, like, uh, like one of the first rooms, I, well, the first area I visited was the, uh, the area where they're working on Close Enough, where they have all the like model sheets all over the walls and stuff. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I mean, it's still Cartoon Card- Card- Network production, but it's on TBS. That's a positive. That's a positive. That, yeah, that is a positive. Yeah. yeah. Close enough is a non-super raunchy adult comedy that has the same elements of regular show, but aimed at an older, an older audience, which it belongs. Yeah. It's like Samurai one of those... Jack is pretty good. <laughs> that's a, that, eh. that. That's close enough. Shut up. Yeah, close enough. Just like J.G. Quintel's new show, which uh, I guess uh, Cartoon Network. New DuckTales? The new DuckTales is great. Suck my DuckTales. Like, yeah, and Darkwing Dark's going to be in it at one point. So, like, there you go. That's a positive. Yeah. Wait, wait. Do people still care about Darkwing Duck? What, what? is this? Nineteen ninety one. Yeah. <laughs> Dark Cuck Duck. Yeah. No one gives a shit about somebody like Tate. Actually, it's called Darkwing Cuck. You idiot. Oh, Cartoon Network's doing construction on their building, so they're gonna expand more. And when they expand more, they're gonna make more TV shows. So you know, you just. Wait. Bojack Horseman's back. Oh, and yeah, I have binged uh, it. It was good. Yeah. It's apparently got to pilot status hey. now. Hey, speaking of Netflix cartoons, have you heard of Jaden Smith's new cartoon, Neo ne- Neo the Yokyo? Anime he's making? Well, actually, it's it's by the creator. The creator is actually uh, the guy from Vampire Weekend or something. You have a sacred duty to protect the city as well as our family name. I told you to clear my schedule. I'm grieving the death of a relationship. It starts Jaden Smith. It's called Neo Yokio, and it's about some rich kid, and he has to play rugby or something and save the world, and it's like an anime, but it's... Why rugby? Or some sport. I'm not sure what it was. (laughs) And he's got to save the world, and he's rich, and I don't know. I mean, the animation looks... it, It looks like a... A flash animated uh anime parody, but it looks fairly decent. Not you know, like it looks better than Kappa Mikey, that's for sure. Still, I know. mean I don't think Kappa Mikey will ever happen again, like in the way it did. No, that's like a weird niche parody that how did how that get approved? I don't know. It's, I don't think it's a parody even. I think it was straight up trying to be Well there was tons and tons of references to anime in there. I guess. Yeah, but I mean, like, well, at, at, at Mikey's entire shtick is, you know, uh, a tongue-in-cheek reference to anime. Like, there's, yeah. there's no real substance to Kappa Mikey. No, I mean, it was at a time when anime was gigantic. So, I, I guess now cartoon, it's, I guess Kappa Mikey would have been maybe a little better today because, like, with stuff like Steven Universe and uh, OKKO OK do nothing but anime references all over. It's true. I mean, like OKKO, OK I, I don't know if you can like. If there would be a show without anime references. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, what I find kind of concerning about OKKO, OK uh, Mars Reviews brought this up, but it's like, do are kids enjoying this cartoon? Because it's like, this is a little niche. Like, there, there's whole segments where it's like, there's some things where it's like, how, if a kid didn't watch Naruto, would they understand why Enid turns into a log? It's like, what's going on? Yeah, I, mean, I never watched really Naruto when I got it. Oh, uh, God, you don't want to get me started on this bullshit. What? I uh, I I got into a, like a Twitter. I I made a lot like a Twitter thread or a Tumblr thread about uh just cartoons just blatantly ripping off uh like um anime and yeah. it's not even it's not even straight up it, and a lot of people are like no it's an homage and I'm like there's a difference between an homage and just straight up ripping off something like uh the the um Hollow Pearl versus Pearl fight in Steven Universe was just straight up ripping off Revolutionary Girl Utena yeah like complete. Like one to one choreography, and it's not. And I'm not saying that it's just exclusively um, American cartoons. Like a, um, anime does it too. Like uh, I remember um, 
Boondocks ripped off Naruto, and then Naruto ripped off um, Cowboy Bebop. So it was a straight like sequence of like like companies ripping off shit directly. Yeah, I was there, like, what's there's the deal? A, there's a Akira motorcycle like skid stop that mm-hmm. has been used like over two hundred. Uh, not two hundred. Uh, that's a random number. Like twenty times at least. Yeah, I can name like, several I, things I, that I did that. I I'd be willing to, intro. I'd be willing to say that the Akira motorcycle slide is because there's no like substance it's just a cool shot yeah it's an homage it's 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 just like a one simple shot that's it it's not like an entire yeah, sequence yeah. yeah no i think the difference between an homage and like a, a parody reference is like if you're you reusing it it should be recontextualized and should be commentary on the original work so like if um if the hollow pearl fight maybe they like this is a really bad example but it's a good example nonetheless if steven was like this is just like watching like animes uh, that would be more of a, a parody or a, a reference and it would kind of be recontextualized a little bit it's again it's a yeah. bad example but it is an example there's like I, i'm really tired so i could i can't really think of anything more than that but well basically we're in this like post post modern as far as like media goes Mm-hmm. And like uh, we're in such uh, basically we're in remix culture. Everything is ha- has some kind of like remix or reference to something that exists. There's very little standalone media where someone just makes something right off the bat. It's always like, oh, we did this to channel so and so, or we did we looked at this movie and we borrowed shots from that. Um, so like I'm- I would be hard pressed to find actual pure originality in anything. I think one show that actually like uh, does it a lot better than like OKKO okay or or uh, Steven Universe, um, as far as like its its influence goes, is uh, Star vs. the Forces of Evil. I think that mm-hmm. it it really uses its references and and um, I guess its influence uh, to and still makes it its own thing. Mm-hmm. Um, like it, it's obviously like um, sort of like some kind of Sailor Moon type thing, um, but it. Besides, like, one uh, instance where the, she actually just goes through a transformation, uh, and it's like, that's so obviously Sailor Moon, but um, uh, everything in Star Versus feels like its own thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, the, the original pitch for the show was is that it's one girl that's obsessed with Sailor Moon and a boy that's obsessed with Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> that's, that's literally what the original show was. Oh, yeah. wow. Um, so it, it morphed into its own thing. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and that's fine. And also, I keep uh, I'm seeing comments in our stream chat. By the way, our um, our um, Twitch chat um, stream is Pizza Party Podcast for those not listening um, live. Link below. But um, a lot of people are saying uh, I'm trying to scroll through and find the one I was talking about. But uh, uh, just a lot of people are referencing um, like is Cuphead a rip off of Bimbo and Betty Boop? And that that no, it's not because. Cuphead is uh, is based on cartoon like yeah. ideals and uh, animation techniques of that era. Yeah, it's based on a style. Yeah, just it's, like yeah, um, yeah. Just, just like Teenage Robot. Yeah, right, right, right. But there, there's no like direct reference of what Cuphead is. There's no Buckethead from the 30s or something. Well, like, I mean, Buckethead, Cuphead. You know, that's a ref. No, that's a reference. There's that no Buckethead. Not... I just said there wasn't a Buckethead. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I'm saying it's a reference. I mean, like yeah. what Buckethead? Like the, the name, the toy. Oh, I mean, the like, toy from like the nineties, or oh, shoot. Mr. Bucket. Oh. You're, you're talking about Mr. Bucket. Mr. Bucket. That's right. I'm Mr. Bucket. I'm Mr. Bucket. Caution balls in my top by Mr. Bucket. Out of my mouth, I will pop by Mr. Bucket. We're all gonna run by Mr. Bucket. The game's Mr. Bucket. The first to get their balls in, and Mr. Bucket wins. But look out, because the balls will pop out of his mouth. I'm Mr. Bucket. The balls pop out of my mouth. I'm Mr. Bucket. A ball is what I'm about. I'm Mr. Bucket. Whee! We're all going to run. I'm Mr. Bucket. <laughs> Mr. Bucket from Milton Bradley. <laughs> Mr. Bucket. Mr. Bucket. Go ahead and suck it. Yeah, that, that, that confused me. That's It's called Mr. Bucket, not Bucket. But Mr. Bucket. And also, and also people mention uh, Stephen Reed's Sailor Moon and stuff and like that stuff is fine like if it's just like a prop in the background that has no relevance to anything like i had no problem when steven had a sanic figure or cloud figure like that's just (laughs) that's just a visual visual gag for yucks what i have a problem with is when a cartoon will straight up like rip off choreography or ideas and not like do anything interesting with them like the fusion aspect of steven universe i like because it deconstructs what fusion is from dragon ball z and it like makes it its own thing and it has its own rules and uh 
like cons and ideas and, and yeah dragon ball started it but steven universe took the idea recontextualized it and made it its own thing so mm -hmm. um that that that's fine with me but but like i said what i have a problem with is oh uh we're just gonna rip off revolutionary girl no or in the case of a okay ko hunter x hunter where they just copied a, a finishing move from that in one of the episodes climax i believe mm, yeah just, just a dang old hot mess of references that that have no commentary or um, on the original property or uh, idea they're referencing or ripping off. So if if, if if my thing Loki IRL becomes a thing, like I'm I'm sure that's exactly what would happen. It would just be like this is nothing but fucking references. This is bullshit. Well, I, I think I think deep down uh, we're all looking for something with substance, yeah. right? Um, and and I think that's why um, a, a good majority of the animation fan base online gets really turned off on things like Teen Titans Go or um, basically any comedy show is that like we're, we're looking for this deep lore and these like rich characters and all working towards something. And um, these shows that are literally just doing references without any substance attached to it. Like you could do a comedy, but at the end of the day, if it's just a bunch of jokes, you're going to forget those jokes. But mm -hmm. if the characters are something worth, you know, they go through something and you grow with them and you get attached well then you're gonna remember that show for a lifetime mm -hmm. um, a joe you know you, like i don't know like uh is there any like comedies you guys remember like a joke and that's it we don't remember anything else about it i i mean to be fair though like a, a comedy is literally nothing but jokes so of course you'd remember the jokes yeah. and the characters like that seems like a bit of an unfair comparison because a, a serialized show would be some is something I mean, so well, much different okay well i think the thing is it's like a lot of shows are funny but if you don't have any characters that are you can attach yourselves to like you know you it's just like well any show could have done that you know you know yeah no i i know but i'm what i'm saying is like you know there are also like Sorry, I'm trying to think, think of putting my fucking words together. If you, you think of that, I, I want to respond to something real quick. Um, someone goes, Izzy, why can't cartoons just be cartoons sometimes? Uh, when I specify that a majority of the animation community is like, you know, super against comedies and they want, you know, Gravity Falls, overlarking uh, plot lines and such, I said there's a majority of people. I didn't say that everyone thought that or even that was my views. Mm -hmm. um, like, like I, I want to context that when I say that there's a group of people, uh, a lot of times I'm speaking like outside of myself and trying to like get a different worldview. Uh, so I apologize for people thinking that that was my my worldview and what I think is the absolute truth. That is not it. Yeah. Steven Universe ripped off magical girl utensils. <laughs> I think with a comedy show, it's more um, appropriate that, uh, you know, you'd remember the jokes more more so than the characters i think to in a certain extent i mean not entirely but a lot of the uh a lot of, but there are quite a few comedy shows where where like that you do remember a lot of the characters and the uh and the uh jokes in like tandem with each other like for example uh always sunny or spongebob or dexter's yeah. lab or you know where I, I mean i'm just i'm just spitballing here but yeah i feel oh. I, but, I, but i feel like to an ex a certain degree like you're not going to remember character moments in a comedy more so than the funny haha -ha jokes mm -hmm. if that right i believe that's not what I'm gonna getting. remember a character moment from spongebob yeah like you you were with spongebob you remember uh you remember when uh patrick yells firmly grasp it and yeah. uh he shoves a shoves a net into yeah. Squidward's hand like I guess you could consider that a character moment but you don't remember that like because it's Patrick or anything you just remember that like Patrick and Squidward are just kind of uh you know that the, they, they're just like there to uh be the through line for the I joke I guess know, yeah well, do, but do you also think that maybe it might be in, uh different age groups and maturity levels like I remember loving shows like Spongebob and Rocco's Modern Life and all those that don't really have an ongoing storyline but now that I'm working and doing stuff, when I give myself time to watch something, my preferred method is if there's not an ongoing plot line, I tend to like kind of drop it and forget about it. Uh, like OKKO, OK for example, that one doesn't really have an overarching plot. But I watched the first six episodes. I like them, but I also don't have a drive to watch OKKO OK every time it appears. Yeah, I, I, I think I think that just comes down to the, the intent and the writing, because with um okay ko like like we've been talking well like i've been talking about it's more so just straight up uh 
you know, homages and uh, pop culture and stuff. And Sponge, with SpongeBob, it was straight up written to like just be self-contained to the point where you could watch it and get the jokes. Like, and plus it was written like with a lot of nuance and layers. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry if I'm not speaking too clearly because I'm super tired, but uh, what I'm trying to get at is SpongeBob was written with the idea in mind that like adults could get the jokes and kids could get the jokes and you didn't need to watch pop culture to understand those jokes. It was just right. the characters being funny. But with OKKO OK and Steven Universe and stuff, now that the internet is a thing, I feel like there's a, a bit more leeway and comfort in that, oh, if we reference this, more people will get it so we can do it. But it's just like, I don't feel like that's the case. Mm-hmm. Like, plus, I think it's also a matter of uh, Steven Universe, OKKO, OK and a lot of current cartoons, even if they're pretty funny, they're not not written, even, even Gumball, which is pretty well received, I feel in my opinion, isn't written with as much nuance as like classic Simpsons or SpongeBob was. Mm-hmm. Because with yeah. because there were a lot of layers to the jokes, but with like Gumball, it's just kind of straight up like meta. And I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's not as nuanced. Yeah, it does have a lot of like meta humor. I like uh, another show that did that was uh, Chowder did a lot of meta humor a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and that that's kind of what I'm getting at is that you you watch a show, and if I feel like a good show, if you watch it again and again at different periods in your life, you'll find new things funny about it. I use yeah. SpongeBob, Simpsons, which are both probably some of the best like old comedy cartoons of the time, I feel personally. I mean, I'm probably missing quite a few, but if you guys want to add anything that you feel is really like a comedy cartoon that really hit the nail on the head in terms of like being culturally impactful and uh, nuanced and funny. Like, uh, oh yeah, somebody in the chat, Chaos Rider said Sonic Boom season two. That's a show I find is funny, but it is very very entrenched in its own meta and meta narrative and the context of you know what sonic is and you know like internet culture and stuff so while i do think it's funny i wouldn't i don't like watch it again and again unless i like find a lot of the funny episodes you know like stuff that i find funny because i'm a sonic fan like stupid sonic uh meta humor but I, i i keep getting off track god damn it but uh, I want to I want to talk a little bit about Steven Universe because I see a lot of people in the comments section right now just kind of like keeps bringing up whether or not Steven Universe sucks or not. Um, what I find very interesting for me is that I rewatched it because I introduced it to someone. Um, I, I introduced it to my ex, and so we watched the whole sh- show again. And I remember being really excited for after Stronger Than You, so the season two and beyond, because that's when it was story focused and it was less slice of life. But then I found myself really enjoying the slice of life episodes more. Uh, than I was the later episodes when watching it the second time around. I, That's just like, like because of the style of writing changed or um, or the fact that with it being such a heavy story-focused show now, which people keep saying nothing happens, but we get like maybe uh, like a small slew of human episodes, but then like 20 episodes dedicated to the plot. So I don't know where people are seeing that uh, that there's not enough plot episodes. But um, like, I don't know, I, maybe because they're written in like being binge watchy now that like uh, the, the first set of episodes just feel more uh, satisfying. I, I, um, I have varying thoughts on that uh, because I, I go back and I watch the slice of life episodes and I'm thinking uh, eh, I don't really particularly care for this. It, um, the humor hasn't aged well to me and I find a lot of the human characters to be extremely obnoxious, Stephen included. And then as they go on, they get a little bit better, but the the townspeople, like the, the main human characters like Connie and uh, Stephen and Greg get better, but the townspeople get infinitely worse. And much, yeah. and like the more they try to quote unquote nuance them, the more obnoxious and annoying they get because they can't write the human characters worth a shit because they have nothing interesting going on. Yeah, I mean, like I, I used to be able to defend Ronaldo when it first, like first season Ronaldo, but ever since that like documentary episode and then later the Social Justice Warrior episode, where like you know he's just doing that whole, well, I'll be a crystal gem, but you're not doing it right. That. Uh, it was way too heavy handed and didn't really like a bad mm-hmm. message. It was just, it wasn't like, well, I, I, I do like, the only thing I like about Ronaldo is that Ronaldo is clearly a, um, what do you call it? Uh, a placeholder, a surrogate for the fan base. And like, it's very clearly that's what the writers feel about the people that are like dissecting every little thing. 
And there's people legitimately theorizing that Ronaldo is going to lead the the gem like war. And it's gonna become a warrior and all this other stuff. <laughs> Good luck with that asshole. <laughs> <laughs> And it's like, hasn't Steven Universe already shown a couple of times with its anticlimactic story, like where it ends like big major arcs with Steven just talks to the person and there was no fighting. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what we want. We, we want that battle. We want the cluster. We want to see the cluster form yeah, and there'd be a battle. And You want to see like Steven with a machine gun and he's shooting the machine gun at a cluster and then the machine gun runs out of bullets instead of reloading the, the machine gun. He pulls out a pistol and starts shooting again. You know, you want to see that. Yeah, I agree. And then instead we got like, all right, let's let's be we're going to bubble it let's and you guys be friends, friends with yourself. Oh, yes. that reminds me of one Steven, point. Steven, you pussy. Was, one point that was brought up in the uh, the Robo Buddies video, which is an excellent video, um, is uh, that... It, feel, it seems like the writers feel like Steven needs to be in, like, every single episode doing what he needs, needs to do as a main character. Where, while they're, they're, like, I don't think there are any episodes where, like, Steven isn't the main focus. One. Mm-hmm. There's one? The New Crystal oh, Gems. Yeah, the New Crystal Gems is where it's kind of oh, yeah, that's right. the story. The, well, but, the, re- the reason why is because um, the creator said Steven is the through line of the show. Everything is through his perspective. So anything that does happen has to have Steven has to be there to experience it or be told about it. Jar Jar is the key to all this. In a sense, he's essentially the Jar Jar of his own show. That's pretty tragic. Oh, no, he's the uh... Jar Jar. This is way more exciting. Have you guys heard about the fan theory that like Jar Jar was originally going to be the big bad of the prequel series? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like, I, is that is I, I've heard jokes about it, but I don't know if it's true. I've, I watched an hour long video about it where oh, like, they're like pinpointing all the little things. And uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, apparently the they, like, they like animate his mouth behind a character when when uh, a character is speaking is like, why would you animate his mouth of like speaking something? Like, that's just more work. <laughs> yeah, but, like, yeah. think about it this way. You go two movies into the, the Star Wars prequels hating Jar Jar. He's such an annoying character. And then at the very end, the third movie, the biggest plot twist ever in movie history, I'm the villain! <laughs> <laughs> They're doing Why it like they did the Scooby-Doo movie where Scrappy was the villain! Yay! <laughs> Dude, dude, can we please, 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 please? You imagine Jar Jar being like that reveal actually happening, and people actually liking Jar Jar. Fuck! It was all one big setup for a joke. It's not a joke. It's the greatest ending of all time. Just like fuck everyone at that point. Just like you, you, you had like twenty years to develop this character and said, "Fuck him. He's a monster now. He's a villain. He's an asshole." Yeah. So if uh, Steven's the Jar Jar of the show, who's the who's the um, Anakin? Um, baby sour cream. Oh. Jasper. No, no, this is pod racing. No, no, Jasper literally gets corrupted and like she she spends her time before being like basically unable to speak. Shit. Cursing Steven and Pink Diamond. So no, this is podcasting. <laughs> but okay, okay, so like my my point with bringing up um, Stephen and the cluster arc is that I know what the writers were trying to do. They were ch- they're trying to make Stephen to this passive, the um, pacifist. You know, he pussy. not not shed- yeah, pussy, a pacifist. <laughs> um, like you know, he's trying to like basically be like, hey guys, we don't have to fight. We can talk this through. Nah, fuck uh, that. If shit. we you know. And then it's like, okay, sure, that works. And like, maybe in the real world, uh, I mean, it doesn't, but like, ideally, it, it sounds great. But as a story, it's so anticlimactic. It's so, it's a letdown. It sucks. It's not, it, it's so I, I engaging. Feel- I don't th- I don't think that it has to be that way. I feel like I just feel like they don't they don't know how to write like pacifist um, dialogue through ca- ca- like and give it the catharsis that an action one would have. Like uh, Undertale did it perfectly, but <laughs> well, like, I, I, I know Undertale is a fucking meme, whatever. But honestly, they oh. they wrote the pacifism route and gave it a real catharsis to it. How so? You, you know what what did it well was Avatar: The Last Airbender. Yeah, yeah, that too. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, not, I mean, I eh, a little bit. I the end if they if they set up the uh, lion turtle a bit better than just like oh hey look a lion turtle. Throughout the series, yeah, twice it would have been better. 
Huh. But I want like a, a fight scene where like Steven just tires out someone and then doesn't actually throw a punch just so they can have the line like he won that fight without even throwing a single punch. It'd be great. Like in One Piece during the uh the the arc before uh Skypea. Yeah. Look um, as... Blackbeard. Are can gems be killed by guns? Probably. Sweet. Oh yeah, you shoot them in the gym. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That sounds more. That sounds more vulgar. Like shoot him here, in the chest. Here, guard it. Hold this gun. The family jewels. <laughs> oh no. Hmm. Yeah. Well, with that all being said, I still enjoy Steven Universe. No, it's, like Steven needs to go through like an edgy phase where Steven's wearing like a black T-shirt and like a white star on it, and then Steven has like a gun or something and says, "You know what? Fuck these evil gems. I'm gonna fuck them all up." Just like mess he goes through a shadow, shadow of the Hedgehog phase. Yeah, yeah. boy. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> My dad's not here, so I can say this word. Damn. So, Pan, I thought Come you'd on. be more excited about uh, Villainous getting um, uh, a pilot. Aquí Blackhat para hacer tus más perturbados pensamientos realidad, literalmente. Esta máquina toma lo más malvado que te puedas imaginar y lo hace real. Por ejemplo, un sándwich es lo más maligno que pudiste imaginar. Oh, all right. So other news besides Steven being a pussy, um, Villanos has been announced for having receiving more shorts. I believe a comic book and also a pilot for a full series. Nice. Yeah, so, you know, I love uh, Evil Con Carne, and that's a great show. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, so get ready for Hot Topic, the TV series. Holla, holla, Hot Topic bait. I mean, you got Totoro, you got Harley Quinn, you got uh, the Wunzler and some other fucker. I'm not sure who that bad guy is. <laughs> yeah, so anyone excited for Villanos for it to become a series or not? Well, possibly. It's a pilot, not a full series yet. I don't really care about Villanos, I'm sorry. Yeah, it looks cute. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. I mean, the bear, I, I'd fuck the bear. That's about it. I mean, there's six minutes of footage, so it's like hard to really deduct anything from there. It's just like, I'm pretty sure most people just want to fuck the characters. Honestly, I mean, there's only six mm -hmm. minutes of anything that happened in that, in total, <laughs> literally. You know, you know, Pan. There's so much more to cartoons than just one to fuck every other character. Is he? Is, is he ever really? stop? Is he? Is he? No, cartoons well, are only about. We need like. Okay, we need to find... They're drawn for us to... Hey, someone in the comments, if you're like one of those obsessive fans of Villainous, tell us why you like it. And, you know, I mean, well, and I know it's funny, but it's like, you know, lots of shows are funny, you know? De Crossrank says, down here, Villainous is the best Latino production ever. And to that, I respond, what's the competition? Rude. Well, still, it's like, it's nice that, you know, Mexico is getting stuff done. Even if you're number one of one, you're still first. Yeah, well, there's also, um... <laughs> if you ain't first, you're last. But there's also, um, what's uh, that show on Netflix, uh, Legend Quest, yeah. You came in, you said, if you ain't first, you're last. Oh, hell, Ricky, I was high when I said that. I mean, that doesn't make any sense at all. You're first, you're last. You, you can be second, you can be third, fourth, hell, be That's stupid. I was high when I said that. <laughs> you could be second. You could be third or fourth. <laughs> Hell, you could even be fifth. <laughs> oh yeah. Somebody edit the. Uh, somebody edit that scene in Ricky Bobby with the villainous being Ricky Bobby, and then uh, wow. uh, his dad being whoever. I don't know how that correlates. How that would work, but yeah. Tell us in the chat, what do you all like about Villanos? You know, do you want to fuck the characters? Well, besides that, you know, I like Villanos uh, for the dark humor. Oh, yeah, that's true. Like, it does have, like, some great weird moments. Yeah, I do love that. You know what I really like? Hmm. Mac 2, baby! Making you knock down the track. Those characters look fucking awful, like the human characters. Are you just insinuating that Knack looks awful in general? Because you're, you're not wrong. I never, yeah. I don't know anything about Knack at all until like that game came out. So I was like, what's this? I don't fucking know. This is a meme. I got no idea. You know that Knack's the game. So you not knowing what Knack is until the game came out makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what the fuck is this? What's Knack? What are you doing this? Okay. I, I, I didn't know if you actually owned a PS4 or not. Yeah, I got a PS4. And that's the only next gen console I own right now. It's not a PS4 Pro, so it's already bullshit. I just wasted my time with a regular PS4 and not the Pro version, so what's the fucking well, point? Well, do, do you have a 4K TV? Because other, no. otherwise it wouldn't matter. Well, still, it's for the, the sake of, you know, having more power. 
What, what if one day no. I do have a 4K TV? What of it? You know, what happens? And you can buy a PS4 at the same time if you're that, you I'm know. I'm not going to rebuy a PS4 and reinstall everything. That's like an hour's of work. You know, I mean, I bought a PS3 and I found out the PS3 I bought isn't compatible with PS2 games, so everything's fucked. Oh, I, my, you have to buy the first generation PS3. Yeah. That's compatible. Yeah. yeah. Dick. I, I have one PS3. for $100. I have a PS3. It doesn't play PS2 games, but I can play PS1 games. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's all bullshit. Oh, okay, so get this. I got so fucking excited because I found out that all PS3s play um, at PS1 games backwards. Yeah. At, uh, yeah, yeah, and I have um, I have a game called Brain Dead Thirteen, I think. Oh, oh, fuck! I have that game. All right, so it's kind of like Dragon's Lair, where like it's uh, you just kind of push left, right, up, down, or whatever, and it's like an animated show. And I had it as a kid, and I fucking loved it. And I bought this PS3, and I got and I bought the game, and I was so excited to play it. And it turns out that it's like one of the like five games that are not backwards compatible on the PS, like it doesn't play properly unless you play it on an original PlayStation. What the fuck? I was so bummed. I was so stuck. You would love it. There's a there's a goth vampire girl that has really big it has big anime titties. All right. Oh right, right, right. Now I remember. Yeah, that one game with the whole horrifically violent wedgie. Yeah, I remember that. It was so good. It like it has like a bunch of different like uh kind of semi gruesome deaths. Like there's no blood or anything, but you know. Literally, you could die like a hundred different ways. It's amazing. Whoa. Yeah, and then we slowly realized that games like uh, Dragon's Lair and Brain Dead 13 were never fucking good. Yeah. Dumb. Bluth my balls. So, hey, you guys want to get into the questions? Uh, sure. Why not? Hey, so questions. If anybody has a question, be sure to post a question in the YouTube comments of this YouTube video or join us on the stream. And our fir- oh, oh, and be sure to start out with the word question so it's easier to find. And our first question is from, huh, let's see, M- Mark Meyer says, question, what's your favorite t-shirt in your collection? Uh, I own a Rat J. Oh, that Rat, yeah, the one you drew or I drew, I don't remember who. I drew it and then you put it on your red bubble. Yeah, we're all fucked. Well, actually, it's not public, so only people, people can only buy the pill version and not the actual Jake version. So yeah, you're the only one who owns that shirt, Nolan. <laughs> I have one shirt. I have a, a dipper with a candle, and behind him is a weeping angel from Doctor Who. I designed it. I really like the shirt, but because the characters look too on model, it's a I can never sell it. So I only only prototype. Uh oh yeah. I have a T-shirt of Raven, and it says "Evil Beware." We have waffles, and it's like a chibi Raven and a waffle behind her. That's the best shirt I own. No regrets. What about you, uh, uh, I don't know. I have a lot of different uh, t-shirts. Mm-hmm. Uh, one I don't think I have anymore is like a Metroid t-shirt. It was it was from Metroid Metal. And it was just like a logo of of a Metroid, but I don't think I have it anymore, unfortunately. <laughs> also, my favorite shirts are the ones I sell on my own Redbubble. So you know, you can you all can go buy that. I, I bought the giant Katrina one with the Sundra written on it. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I also have a t-shirt store. Yeah, that out there. Oh, Izzy, you you have a shirt for sale. I forgot of the Pizza Party podcast. Yeah, I have this really cool one where it's uh, the four of us uh, piling a mech that has Ken's face. Yeah, as the mech head because he's yeah. fucked. Yeah, but uh, let's see, let's see what's uh, the questions in the chat. Uh, Question: What is your best worst Doctor Who alien monster? I don't watch that shit. I do, and I'm gonna say my the best is probably the Weeping Angel because I'm a fucking loser. The worst is that one guy who absorbed all those Doctor Who fanboys and fangirls. Oh, <laughs> what? Oh god. Okay, so so there's this character in the uh, Doctor Who that was that was created by a little kid. Um, though the only difference is that the kid's original design was supposed to be like a, a like a giant couple story tall built monster, but um, they wrote an episode. It's a Doctor Light episode. Which means um, the doctor's barely in it. He only appears at the, at the very end, and the rest of it's just like these original characters. And it's just a really fucking bad episode where this guy like forms a group that searches for the doctor and then slowly absorbs each member into his body. And at the very end, uh, the love interest she can't be reformed, so she just basically becomes a living blowjob. Oh my god! What? Yeah. Okay, to, to, for context, um, the doctor's like, I can save your girlfriend, sort of. And the guy's like, what? And so 
she gets like um so he puts her in like a slab of concrete like a tile of concrete I know this sounds terrible, but Doctor Who is actually a really damn good show. This is just honestly the worst episode. Yeah, yeah. Of, like, like the whole, the, even of the Moffat era, I believe it's the worst. Yeah, well, like the thing about it is the episode literally ends with like, yeah, our love life's pretty great. And it insinuates that they still have a sex life because he just sticks his penis in her, like Whoa. in her mouth. Like that's it. Like, like it, it, it's a, it ends on a blowjob joke. It's literally one of the worst episodes. It like everyone agrees upon this. Doctor Who is weird. Doctor Who gives a shit. Boxy says, question, what's your favorite porn artist? Mine is Big Dead Alive. What's your favorite porn artist, guys? Oh, geez. I don't know. Uh, I like porn I, artists a lot. Yeah, I think one of them that I always go back to is Aeroboros. What they he's, do? He's oh, a yeah, that guy. He's a Pokemon porn artist. He's really good. Mm. Huh. Shout out to him. I like the fucking devil. Yeah, let's see. Hang on, I gotta check my special folder. Like, who whose art do I have in here? Um, I please, please stop calling it your special folder. What am I supposed to call it? <laughs> also, he, he's he's not my favorite porn artist, but he's one of my favorite friends. It's Herney. Oh, Herney yeah. is so good. Yeah. I love Herney. Herney's a good boy, and I love him. Yeah, I got I smut of Herney in here. Yeah, I got that. You have smut of Herney. Herney's drawings. You know. Oh, oh, please. I got my own drawings in here. I know what I like, you know. I'm not going to say what. Anyway. Yeah, let's see. Zone 10, obviously. Um, there's... Hang on. Big Dead Alive. I know them. They, they, they're... they We're going to do something later. Hang, hang on. Um, shit, I, that's all I can think of right now. Fuck. Shit. Okay, next question. I, I ran out of porn questions. Hang on. Well, I don't... Oh, shit, I don't know. Do you guys know any other porn artists y'all really like? I don't know names. Like, that's the only thing that sucks. Is like, I, I feel... The... That sucks. Yeah, yeah. people, if you're gonna draw porn, put your uh, name on the image so we remember who you are when I'm, like, looking at it. Nikki oh. Huntsman is a great porn... What they do? She, we talked to her on the 69th episode. Oh, the awesome. lost one. Star. Yeah, fuck. You guys... No, she doesn't draw, but she is an artist. Yeah. Uh... She's a cosplayer now. Oh, she does sexy really? cosplay. What does she cosplay as? She most recently did Scarlet Witch, not the, Ooh. not the movie version, but the cartoon. Who's Scarlet Witch? Oh, oh. X Men. <laughs> I, I know her as Wanda. Okay. I didn't know you're on like you know first name basis I, with the person. It's X Men Evolution. That's all I know her by. And from the well, they don't call. Do they even say Scarlet Witch in the Avengers movies? Uh, yeah. They usually don't use a lot of the the superhero names. That that always yeah. bugs me in superhero movies. Like they somehow got to sneak in like the name. Like I remember in the uh, the incredible the second Hulk movie, like there was some evil guy who who wanted to be like injected with chemicals, and he says, "Inject me with this." And the guy, some other guy, says, "You can't do that. You'll become an abomination." And abomination is the character name. <laughs> Gross. Yeah. It's like this Winks at audience. Dumb. They just need to flat out say, yeah, I'm motherfucking Scarlet Witch. Fucker, give me a good costume. I don't want to wear this shit. Like, I demand, you know, it's a new era. Why is Scarlet Witch still in that crappy casual attire? She needs, like, a real superhero costume. She needs the big V on her face. Yeah, for vagina. <laughs> That's what the V stands for, typically. Like, name another thing V stands for, you know? You can't. Like, I remember I was on the phone. Varicose veins. <laughs> I remember when I was on the phone and, like, I had to explain something to someone, like, saying, uh, A as in apple, uh, B as in, uh, velociraptor. Like, I couldn't think of something other than vagina, so velociraptor was what I came up with. <laughs> oh, okay. So, uh, earlier today, I... I had my mom, like, if you see these games, like, on the Switch, if you find them cheap at a pawn shop or something, because she goes to assignment shops a lot, if the rare chance she can find some of these for, like, 30 bucks, buy them. And I was having to write down titles, mm -hmm. and she made me ask, uh, she she asked me how to spell Mario. <gasps> oh. Like, I, I had to, like, slowly, M-A-R-I-O. Mario is such a basic name. Yeah. I know. Like, it's like a very common Italian name. Yeah, they fucked up. Uh, or Orange and Creamsicles question. Thoughts on fourth wall breaking cartoons? How to do it right and when? Yeah, I'm tired of Deadpool shit. It depends on the, I think, the 
the show and how seriously the show's taking itself. Yeah. If it's a pure comedy, I'm kind of okay with it. But if it's like something super serious and like it's just like this weird random joke, like it's never referenced or done ever again, it's kind of odd. But I also don't really care for characters who exclusively that's their character trait. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck you, Deadpool. Hi, audience. This is Deadpool. Whoops, was that a fourth wall? I think I just broke it. Oh, I see a question relates to something I did. It says, have you guys seen the It movie? And I recently saw that yesterday. Nope, I didn't see It. No. Neither did I. Yeah, it is pretty good. I, just... I, it's a very fun horror movie. Tim Curry. Does Tim Curry cameo? Nah. Uh, no, but you do see a cameo of the clown as like a doll. Nah. Waha! 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 Smashing. <laughs> Hey, kid, you want to come down here and film a nature documentary, you fucking bitch? Savage Class says, question, what anime would you want to try to get a live-action movie at, at this point, knowing a lot of them have failed? Wh which anime None. needs... No, come on, there's still a chance. None of them. Come on. Come one on. Punch Man, I want to see how we fuck that one up. That could no, work. no, please don't. I I remember someone made like a fake My Hero Academia poster and it had like uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson as uh, All Might. And I'm like, that could work. <laughs> they, keep, they keep casting Michael Sarah these fake anime posters and it's so funny to me. <laughs> oh my God, Michael Sarah is Deku. <laughs> Michael Sarah. Michael Sarah is Deku and Michael Sarah is Naruto. Oh. Just all this other shit. I love when people cast Michael Sarah as like all the random. But that, that, that just is, is it because he was in Scott Pilgrim? Is that the only reason? I think so. <laughs> or maybe he just looks like he's still 12 and he's like 30 now. I just think it's a joke. No one knows. Let's yeah. not analyze jokes. You know. Hmm, but okay, I think let's see. My hero academia could work. It's well, it's it's what they did. It's called Sky High, never mind. Um <laughs> when's that cowboy bebop? In two. Huh? Bebop and One Piece is live action TV shows. They have one, or they're coming. They're out working one? on it. Yeah, like they have announced it. Like um, we haven't seen anything of it, so I'm really curious about how that's gonna go. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm. You how know, the hell are you gonna do One Piece? I don't fucking know. Yeah, I have no idea. One Piece is too Japanese and too. Yeah, yeah I mean, I understand Kill with No, no, no I disagree. Yeah, I was gonna but, say One Piece is not too Japanese at all. Are you sure? It yeah, kind of like, is. Yeah, I know the character. Have, like, have you read or watched One Piece? Oh, it's not yeah. Japanese at all. It's so like it. It's ninety percent references to Western stuff. Hmm. There may be lots of Western references, but there's a lot of shit that like, like American people would just be like, "What the?" Like a live action adult American audience would be like, what the "Fuck is this?" Yeah, what the fuck is this shit? Huh. Uh, like, I'm, like, I'm, like, are, like, are you now? telling me? Are you telling me, like, shapeshifter? Who like can touch people and like replicate their whole bodies to be like exactly like that person? And then he flashes everyone. That's an American thing. Like Americans would flip the fuck out if they saw that. Hey, They'd be um, like, "This is not Christian." No. <laughs> First of all, shapeshifter thing. X Men done does it a lot. Actually, yeah. they do that a lot. Uh, that's basically the entirety of the the movie version of uh, Mystique. Yeah, I guess. Myst like she gets naked all the time in Aww, front of people. Yeah. Uh, so uh, no, no, that one. Try again. I mean, like, okay, uh, look, all you got to do is make a pirate movie, and everybody's got superpowers. So you know that that could be done, possibly. I don't know. All right, maybe. Uh, Who knows? We'll see. we'll see. We'll see. Look, you just got to make a shitty trailer, and then you got to add like an '80s pop song, and then people will eat it up. You know? Yeah. But okay, yeah. I, yeah, I mean. I mean, like, if it, I, for American audiences, I agree that there's certain things that they would have to adapt for the American audience to accept the world of pirates. Mm -hmm. Like, they would have to kind of gritty it up a little bit, and maybe some of the the more jokey Japanese end jokes would have to like change. But like for the most part, I would say a good like seventy to eighty percent of One Piece is easily translatable into a like into an American thing. It wouldn't yeah. be that hard. I mean, yes, there is weird, random, like, Japanese-exclusive foods and, like, little references to their way of life. But it's also a group of pirates traveling to different islands and different cultures. It would be really easy to explain a lot of the stuff that we don't get yeah. as just uh, an islander thing. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I mainly was confused because, like, One Piece isn't even, like, oh, close to being done. No. 
I mean, so, if, if they did do a movie, I would imagine it would look like the Spy Kids movies and just. But it's not a movie. It's a TV show. Shit. Yeah. Well, also, American TV shows operate a lot differently than anime the, um, in yeah. Japan because anime, they just go on forever and ever and they don't stop until they stop or, or take maybe a week off. But uh, and also the same thing is with manga. They maybe take one or two weeks off a year, if that, and then they just keep going and going and going. But here we take a year to make a, a season and then like we air the season and then we work on the next one. So, yeah, yeah. I so mean, if, can, even if do. even if it's successful, it won't catch up. Prob- yeah. it probably it won't catch up until like until like years. twenty years. Yeah, hmm. and even then, how are they going to do? Th- how are they going to have the cast? How are they going to explain the cast aging? <laughs> no one knows. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Well, like uh, it depends. They're so far ahead, and the show's halfway done. I mean, let's let's be face it. I don't. I, I, the thing I can't understand would be uh, the budget. Because, you know, One Piece is so, like, it, it, there's so much CGI that would have to do. There's so many special effects. And then on top of that, green screening with, like, you know, actual pirate ships and stuff. Like, I just can't see a cost-effective way of having a pirate show. Yeah. Um, it, it either it, It's either going to be cost-effective to look shitty and awful, or it's going to be so over budget, which I doubt, but <laughs> it could happen, that, that it won't be profitable. <laughs> Hey, yeah. Like I can't wait for every scene to be inside the cabin and oh. they never leave when they when when they're uh, sailing. Oh, it's gonna be like the fucking <laughs> what's that Marvel movie that Marvel show? Uh, Inhumans. They're just gonna cheap out on it so badly. Um, I'm surprised. I'm surprised the Marvel shows are as cheap as they are. It's not. As cheap out. It looks like shit. So it be it being cheap isn't good at all. I mean, like, um, I, I like what I want from a One Piece movie. Like, there was this. If anyone ever seen the Dick Tracy movie released in like the '90s or so, like everyone's oh, face, very stylized. Yeah, the prosthetic yeah. faces and exaggerated things. Like, that's how a One Piece movie should look like. Something like that. That's well, at least that's what I would want. Just prosthetics on everybody. Well, well given like Tim Burton, I guess that's giant not too chins far. and noses. Yeah. Oh, but I guess like Cowboy Bebop would be easier because it's still roughly an action show with some space elements. So, you know. Well, I mean, like we've already if if you're benchmarking TV shows that had a budget for TV, Firefly yeah, that's, and Dark Matter, like it's been done. We know everyone says that Firefly is basically Cowboy Bebop, you know, I thought they said it was basically Outlaw Star. Something like that, yeah. That that too would work, man. Like jo- Josh Whedon is a hack. I wouldn't be surprised. Fuck you, Josh Whedon, you bald fucking syndrome-looking motherfucker. Was, syndrome as in The Incredibles, not the other thing. Josh Whedon has actually been like subject to a lot of controversy very fast recently. Yeah, I mean, very I fast. Won't, mm. Yeah, I won't get into many. I won't get into like the nitty gritty because I'm I'm tired. And I have a headache, but. Um, he like his wife came out and said a lot of allegations about him, but also his uh, Batgirl script leaked or was released, and it is awful. <laughs> Do Ooh. tell what's about, what happened in Batgirl. It's just it's I I, I hate using buzzwords, but it's just extremely sexist. <laughs> oh. And Ooh. and he and like his idea of like a girl going through like a, a woman or a girl etc going through a character arc and becoming a hero is them getting brutalized. So essentially, the uh, Tomb Raider reboot with <laughs> shit, yeah, time to go womb raiding on that tomb. Know what I'm saying? I don't. I I, th- I don't think like Penders. I, not Penders. Uh, <laughs> somebody in the chat said that. I don't think uh, Joss Whedon what writes as much terrible stuff as uh, people think he does. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of people seem to hate him. But I think I I liked Avengers. I even thought Avengers Two was kind of okay, not great. But it was okay. But I think I think part of that was because like the the idea of a, a big hero crossover movie had worn off at that point. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So like people could look at it more objectively. But other than that, I don't know. It's just uh, yeah. After all this, like all this controversy that came within months of each other, he he's just kind of like, oh boy, you know, he's on his way out. Yeah, on his way out of this bullshit. Oh, so any other? Let's see what other questions. Because I think. Oh, one last thing. I guess Cal- yeah, obviously Cowboy Bebop, but who was that? Sh- Black Lagoon would also work because that's fairly grounded and doesn't do the anime kawaii face shit, you know? So that, Too often. Yeah, that, that could work as a live action movie. 
You know what would have been really fucking easy for them to do? Hmm. Death Note live action thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, no, no, guys, guys, a Death Note live action movie would be fucking awesome, okay? So, like, we could, we could, like, cast, like, one of those pretty boys from, uh, you know, like, one of those old Nickelodeon shows or something. Yeah. And, and then, and then so we can get, like, um, politically correct points, we could cast a black guy as L. You know, like, you know, and there's no... There's idea like, I never heard. No, you know he could be Japanese, like in the original, but no people like black people more. So we'll cast him as that, and people will immediately think it's a progressive movie, even though we don't do anything in regards to like racial commentary or anything. It's brilliant. Oh, and, you know, um, and you know what else we could do? We could we could set it in high school and make it a high school drama. And Willem Dafoe is Ryuk. Willem okay, that's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. You know, that's pretty good if you're an idiot. Yeah. Well, oh, well, oh. Willem, De- Willem Dafoe is, re- is such a dumb idea. They only look exactly the same and speak exactly the same. Like, come Shit, on. I got punked. <laughs> Fuck, is this MTV? Are you Aston Kutcher? Because I was just punked right now. Shit, I thought... So no, like instead a, of okay. instead of Willem Dafoe, we'll go with The Rock. Oh, go. yeah, that's a good idea. That's oh, a good idea. Oh yeah, just cast The you Rock know, in anything. You know, The Rock, The Rock is a big, friendly, muscle dude. You know that fits real quickly. Let's do that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. buddy, buddy with him. I'm still up yes. for the idea of Rock playing uh, All Might. I, I want that now. So uh, okay, I'm gonna sound super salty, but like I love the fact that Adam ranted for two hours about Death Note and then made another two minute two hour video ranting about Death Note. Shit. I don't think that's salty. <laughs> I don't think that's salty at all. I do think that's funny. It's like, because damn, he was pissed. I, 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 uh, well, apparently, like, Death Note is, like, one of the only few animes he, like, genuinely enjoys. I don't I don't know about, uh, I don't know if he, like, hates anime or not, I, and I'm not going to speculate on that or say anything. But yeah, I think um, Death Note was a very, like, he loved Death Note. So when uh, the, something like this happened, like, I do think it's funny he's that passionate about it that he can talk four hours about yeah. it. <laughs> Let's answer one final question, because I'm done with this bullshit. Yeah, I'm tired. Uh, really see, tired. Uh, hmm. While you're looking for the question, I want to shout out to Pikafin, who uh, I, I've been I've been trying to find someone to swap. I, I've got the Steam Sonic Media code, because I bought the Steam Collector's <laughs> Edition. And I, since I got a Switch, I really want it. And he swapped his Switch code with my Steam code. And I didn't think, I didn't think that was going to happen. So thank nice. you. Dude. Good job, guys. We did it. Izzy got Izzy got the game. No! We did it. We did it, gamers. Come along, everyone. <laughs> well class, as my big sister always says. Boss, do your stuff. Cruising on down Main Street. You're relaxed and feeling good. Next thing that you know, you're seeing. <laughs> Question thought here's a, here's a good question thoughts on the Magic School Bus reboot it's shit oh yeah the Magic School oh, Bus is coming terrible. out it looks like fucking shit it looks awful they're doing they're doing that stupid gimmick where the the younger person comes out and they're like we're ta- I'm taking over this dumpster fire and it's shit that's all yeah, I yeah to say. I mean like the, all By the, the way it'd be lore why do they need it like the deep rich lore of them s- passing the torch why uh, couldn't it have been just a fucking reboot just for fun it just needed Whatever. to be a hard reboot wait hey wait but, like is it the same kids as before yes yeah yeah. Except for one of them swapped uh, swapped races. Have they not no. fucking graduated? Why is the kid still there? And how is the teacher? How did she like age like 40 years? Yet time stayed the same. Oh, uh, man. And then Arnold. I mean, OK, so the thing about the, the magic school bus, they didn't need a continuity. Like there, there's no reason for any lore for them to swap the keys and give it to a new teacher who's also just Miss Frizzle technically uh, just has a new celebrity voice. Yeah. Like. Only, only, only thing continuity you need to know is that Arnold has a bitchy si- a cousin that goes to a different school, and her school's better. That like she goes Shit. to a private school, and they go to the shitty like you know uh, public. Uh, I, I don't know what the terms are I don't for know, it's like a, a schoolhouse. Like that only has like ten kids in there enrolled. Yeah, proved wrong that their school's better because they have witchcraft. <laughs> why, why did why <laughs> did why didn't they just take that live action trailer? Why didn't they just make that? Wait, there's a live action school bus trailer or like a fake one? No, it was it was a parody. It was a fake one where they all go to hell to save Miss Frizzle. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it was fucking awesome. Oh, I'll see if I can find it. Oh man. By the way, the um the theme song uh is it's sung by Lynn Manuel uh, Miranda. Um 
Ooh, and uh, as I was listening to it, I was like, this this really is not that great. And it's not his best singing because like there's there's a point in the song where he says the magic school bus, but when he says bus, you can hear the pitch correction on it. School bus, I'm like, whoa, did they really just fold it in like that hard? <laughs> well, well, how so? What's a pitch correction? It's where it's 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 where the, the, it's exactly what it sounds like. They they correct the pitch of of the note. So. Um, so he's like saying it, but then it just seems like yeah, magic it, it, school it, it, start, it starts sounding like an auto tune. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, did you notice in the trailer how much of this the stuff was reacting to the theme song? So I guarantee half the footage we saw in the, in the fucking trailer was just the theme song. Which keep in mind yeah. that animation was really really lazy. Yeah. So if that's the cream of the crop, <laughs> that's where they usually put their money is in the intro. Oh god, um, that looks- really terrifies me. And the w- worst part is that, like, it's animated just like any other show. Like on new grounds. Well, it's 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 puppeteered, but like, it, so is uh, Rick and Morty. So is Bob's Burgers. Yeah. So is like all the other stuff. If they would have just done like a couple of more face poses per character to where they could actually have the character, you know, have a little perspective, um, it would have been fine. But it looks like it's sixteening it, where it's just three fourths <laughs> of you every time, and you just kind of flop it. Six tweening it, you mean? <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, uh, I mean, it looks like someone commented saying it looks like one of those dress up games where you go online and you have like a little some flash does. game where you dress it, up a it, character. They're all the same exact model. Yeah. yeah, it literally looks like a cross between a Disney Channel coloring book and the My Little Pony cartoon, like yeah. the oh, Equestria Girls, yeah. as far like as far as designs. And um, I, did, I just still can't get past the fact that they patched the torch. Like, you know, they have everything's exactly the same. It's just a different teacher. What was the point? She just did, have like the same students. How like at least change the students. Or I guess unless you want to have Carlos's shitty jokes still in there. Well, I mean, that's kind of the thing is like, you know, oh, Ralphie, Carlos, Car- Arnold. Like those no. those are I guess that's part of the show. But as far as animation goes, the, the show didn't need amazing animation because 90 percent of the original show is them walking up to a thing and then they're all in still poses with occasional head bump <laughs> up and down in the original show anyway don't ruin this Izzy. don't ruin this <laughs> well i'm just saying this could have easily have been a cg show instead of a, a really shitty flash cartoon do you want do you guys want shitty cg or shitty flash um shitty cg Shitty, yeah. shitty CG always looks funnier. <laughs> also, yeah. I was playing the live action trailer and I forgot that my stream would pick that up. So the whole live action trailer was playing on stream. Oh no! <laughs> Oops. Oh no! Yeah. Now we're we're we're, we're, prof- we're professionals here at the Pizza oh. Party Podcast. The, the the new teacher deported Carlos, by the way, in this version. Sorry. No, no. <laughs> that would be, no, that would be funny. No, that'd be a funny episode where, t- since Donald Trump is like a hot topic now, they could talk about. Him rights <laughs> and carlos is like oh no guys i'm gonna get deported that's that's a good one carlos no i mean it oh, they're gonna deport me like, that's no, right. no 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 they go guys i'm gonna get deported and they all go carlos <laughs> why isn't anyone listening to me help <laughs> there's carlos again classic carlos look at him he's being uh, taken away <laughs> Jumping on the Donald Trump thing as far as political correctness and all that other stuff, um, this makes me immediately think of the Bill Nye TV show, which was actually a really bad TV show. So that also gives you another notch in the educational side of Netflix. Has not been too good so far? So I, I don't know how far, like how good this is going to be or if they're going to touch political stuff or gender or all that other thing. Like I don't really want them to. I think it's kind of good if yeah. they just, kinda, you know – um, making volcanoes and uh, going inside human bodies. Let's yeah, just do the only edu- yeah, I want to go inside a human body, Hong Kong. The only edutainment thing on Netflix that I've seen like any positive reaction to was that uh, that Puff and Rock show, Puff. um, which is is made by the the same people that did like Song of the Sea and Secret of the Kells. It sounded like a drug show, to be honest. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to puff this rock. But yeah, uh, that, that's the only like positive thing that I've seen from like edutainment from Netflix is Puff and Rock. I don't know what the fuck that is. All right. Last last question. No, we got to talk about this bullshit magic school bus because it's like, shit, I hate I'm it. tired. Why? I'm still confused. Like, how did, like, Miss Frizzle's voice sounds like she, yeah, she really does sound like an 80-year-old woman, which I wouldn't be surprised if that's Because the it's the same voice actress. But it's from, like, like she, 
fucking old. And there's a conspiracy going on here because she aged dramatically and all the kids are the same and they haven't graduated. Her so design is exactly the same. She doesn't her, look that, That's older. because that, that school is a limbo. <laughs> they don't they don't change. Yeah, it's like it's just like that they exist in that soul plane of reality. Like it's that, that their world is just the magic school bus schoolhouse and that's all and occasionally space or whatever they needed to exist in this reality. It's kind of like Coraline's house in uh, the, her evil house in Coraline, the uh, negative world, you know? Something Game like that. theory. What if Arnold never made it to school on that one day? He forgot his he forgot to get his permission slip signed, and on the way to school, his bus crashed. And now him and his class are forever trapped. In a purgatory. Carlos is actually sans. Watch as Spider Raider makes a conspiracy oh, video man. based on Izzy. Yeah, so is that all for the questions or one more do you guys got? Question. Mac is Maxwell Adams gonna be on the podcast? Cast. Someday. Uh -huh. I also got a special guest, a voice actor associated with Maxwell Adams, who's going to be on, uh, or Aqua Teen, I don't know. You'll see. Who is it? You'll see someday, eventually, some Aqua Teen actor. All right. Yeah. That's the end of the podcast. I have a headache. Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye, every <laughs> pony. <laughs> Is everyone love the fact that this is oh. Nolan's podcast? Uh, Austin says, question, are you are you excited for Kingsman 2? Yes, I am! Yeah, boy! They better fucking redo something on the level of the church scene, otherwise, what's the fucking point? I still need to watch that movie. Yeah! Uh, I do too. Alright, bye, every pony. I love you all. Just kidding. Fuck, fuck all, you. Fuck all y'all. Bye. Oh. I hate y'all. Right, bye. Love you. R-E-N-E-R- -E and what? Hear what I say, we in the business today. Fuck shit is finished today. RTNJ, we the new PBNJ. We drop a classic today. We did a tablet of acid today. Did joints with the masses and ashes away. Skirt, we dashed away. Donner and Dixon, the pistol and blasting away. Doctors of death, curing our patients of breath. We ought to pay you the trust. Crooked at work, cooking up curses and slurs. Smoking my brain into mush. I became famous for blaming you fucks. Maiming my way through the brush. There ain't no training or taming me in my bra. Look like a man, but an animal wrong. We are the murderers. Is pair. Then we went to jail and murdered the murderers there. Then we went to hell and discovered the devil delivered some hurt and despair. Used to have power to push. Now I smoke pounds of the kush. Holy, I'm burning a bush. Now I give a fuck about none of this shit. Jewel run over and out of this bitch. Woo! Woo! Step into the spotlight! Woo!